नमस्ते नमस्कार वेलकम टू लेवल वन आर्चरी कोचेस वर्कशॉप ट्रेनिंग एग्जामिनेशन एंड सर्टिफिकेशन ऑर्गेनाइज बाय आर्चरी एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडिया ए कोचेस कमिटी एंड सपोर्टेड बाय ओजीक्यू ओलंपिक गोल्ड क्वेस्ट द मोस्ट एक्सक्लूसिव एक्सपेंसिव डिटेल्ड हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग असेसमेंट एंड सर्टिफिकेशन प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द आर्चरी एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड येस सपोर्टेड बाय OGQ In today's session we will start to get to know about the history of archery history of archery ke bare mein aaj hum log janenge ye uh, lecture shuru karne ke pehle aap samajh lo ke 10 questions aapko hum log diye gaye hain we have sent you 10 questions and uh, from this lecture the answer to your 10 questions will be in this lecture please listen to this lecture carefully and find and note down the answers you will have to send the answers by 8 pm in the evening today by direct message to me please remember listen to this lecture several times over and over again in your headphones till the contents sink into your head and your heart aapne is lecture ko bar bar aapko कान में हेडफोन्स uh, डाल के सुनो तभी तो आपको ये आपका मन के अंदर जाएगा वेल यस द एंटायर लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी इन इंग्लिश बट इट्स नॉट दैट डिफिकल्ट जस्ट अ लिटिल एफर्ट फ्रॉम योर साइड एंड यू विल बी एबल टू जेल इन प्लीज रिमेंबर व्हेन यू गो टू द इंटरनेशनल सर्टिफिकेशन बाय वर्ल्ड आर्चरी द मीडियम इज ओनली गोइंग टू बी इन इंग्लिश डू बेटर स्टार्ट learning a little bit of working english and yes in the oral and written examinations question will be asked from these lectures so please take these lectures seriously while there are thousands of archery and archery coaches who know nothing about the history of archery yet have spent decades in the practicing and teaching of archery it is important that you who is being trained by the archery association of india aai are a master coach and the first important attribute of a master coach is to be connected to the root of whatever you are a professional in thus it becomes very important and pertinent to learn the history of archery हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्चरी सीखना एक आर्चरी कोच को बहुत बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वेन यू पिक अप अ बोट टू शूट योर फर्स्ट एरो यू आर पार्ट टेकिंग इन एन एक्टिविटी डेटिंग बैक एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ईयर्स द बो एंड एरो आर पिक्चर्ड इन ड्रॉइंग्स that old 20000 years ago on a cave wall in spain's waltor tagorge the bow and arrow were once critical to human kind's survival the bow allowed humans to become proficient hunters prey provided various raw materials such as hide bone and sinew for tools shelter and clothing and added more protein to the diet it was safer to hunt with a bow because prey could be shot from a far off distance empires rose and fell through the use of the bow and arrow as weapons the ancient egyptians first established the bow as a primary weapon of war around 3500 bc they made bows almost as tall as themselves and arrow heads of flint and bronze around 1800 bc the assyrians introduced a new bow design who introduced the assyrians a short composite bow made of leather horn and wood with a recurved shape it was more powerful than the long bow used by the egyptians and could be easily handled on horseback this gave the assyrians an edge in battle 
over the Middle Eastern rivals. The Hittites also used the short curved bow in mobile warfare by shooting from the light, fast chariots they developed around 1200 BC. Middle Eastern superiority in archery continued for centuries as the people of these areas successfully fought Europeans. For example, the Romans, although known as mighty soldiers, used an inefficient draw to the chest in shooting the bow and were outclassed as archers by the 3rd century Parthenians of Asia. The Mongols conquered much of Europe and the Turks threw back the Crusaders in part because of archery equipment of the superior recurve design and better shooting technique. In the 11th century, the Normans developed the longbow that they used along with superior battle strategy to defeat the English at the Battle of Hastings in AD 1066. Thereafter, the English abandoned the longbow as the major weapon and uh, the Saxon styled bow, which was weaker and less accurate. Many ballads of the 13th and 14th centuries, such as the tales of the famous Robin Hood, attest to the archery skill the English developed with the longbow. The value of the bow as a war weapon declined swiftly after the invention of firearms in the 16th century. But the fun and challenge of archery guaranteed its continued existence as a sport. King Henry VIII promoted archery as a sport in England by directing Sir Christopher Morris to establish an archery society, the Guild of St. George in 1537. Rogel Ascham published the book Toxophilus in 1545. When did he publish? In 1545 to preserve much of the archery knowledge of that time and to maintain interest in archery among the English archery societies. The English archery societies were founded throughout the 1600s and the tournaments they often formed firmly established archery as a competitive sport. The ancient Scorton Silver Arrow Contest, the ancient Scorton Silver Arrow Contest was first held in 1673 in Yorkshire, England and continues to be held today. Women joined the men in competition and were first admitted to an archery society in 1787. On the North American continent, Indians relied on the bow and arrow for hunting. Indian bows, however, were very crude and weak. The hunter had to get close to the prey to be successful. European settlers brought the well-developed knowledge of bow making from the native countries and kept interest in target archery alive. The first archery club on this continent, the United Bowmen of Philadelphia, was established in the year 1828. Oddly, greater interest in archery in the United States was spurred by the Civil War. When the war ended, the victorious Union prohibited former Confederate soldiers from using firearms. Two brother veterans, Will and Morris Thompson, learned the archery with the help of Florida Indians. Morris wrote a book, The Witchery of Archery, which helped spread interest in archery across the country. By 1879, the National Archery Association was founded and began holding national tournaments. Enthusiasm for field archery, a target archery competition, simulating hunting and hunting itself led to establishment of the National Field Archery Association in 1939. Archery first became an official 
Olympic event, the Paris Olympics in 1900, an appropriate sanctioning because the mythical founder of the ancient Olympics was Hercules, an archer. Archery continued to be shot at 1904 St. Louis Olympiad and at the 1908 Olympics in England, but did not reappear until 1920 when the Olympics was held in Belgium. Archery failed to appear in any of the Olympic Games held over the next 52 years. The problem with early archery competition was the lack of a universal set of rules and regulations. The host country had usually held the type of archery contest most popular in that country. If archery was not popular in the host country, the event was not even held during athletic meets. To better organize competitive archery, Polish archers worked to establish an international governing body during the 1930s. As a result, the Federation International, the Tir Alak, known by its acronym FITA, FITA, was founded. FITA set up universal rules and a type of round that was eventually adopted as a round shot by men and women in the modern Olympics. International competition so grew and gained momentum in succeeding decades that archery was readopted for the 1972 Olympic Games. Technical advances in bow and arrow design have spurred shooting accuracy and consequently interest in archery. None has had more impact than H.W. Allen's invention of the compound bow in 1966 in Missouri. In 1966 in Missouri, the compound bow makes use of eccentrics of center axle, pulleys or cams mounted in the tips of the bow limbs to reduce the holding weight of the bow for a given draw weight. These types of bows are popular in North America for target and field archery as well as hunting and today is popular all over the world. While Olympic competition is limited to the traditional recurve, many archers enjoy the challenge of combining mechanical advantage and personal skill with the compound bow. Compound bow archery is very, very popular and is there in all the world championships and the world in the Asian Games. Archery is enjoyed today by thousands of people all over the world. One of the reasons for its popularity lies in the many ways to enjoy archery, including target archery shooting and the hunting. Archery can be shot by men and women, children and older adults, and by even the handicapped. Today we have seen, even in the nationals, uh, last time in the, in, the, in, the, in the junior nationals, we saw an armless archer shooting. She was fantastic. The challenge of hitting your mark is timeless. Today, many archers enjoy target archery using the equipment and rules established for the modern Olympic Games by world archery. The bow is limited to the recurve bow in the Olympics. Only the recurve bow is used in the Olympics. There is a talk that the compound bow might come, but you never know. Bow sights are permitted and the bow string must be drawn and held with the fingers or finger taps. The National Archery Association of the United States sponsors competitions for archers using this such kind of equipment. Bow hunting is a popular activity today in many countries. Bow fishing, you also call it aqua archery, is another way to enjoy archery. Fish are shot from a boat or a canoe with an arrow attached to a fishing line. A special reel is mounted on the face of the bow. The fish taken are often carp, gar, buffalo, suckers, red horse, stingray and skates. Most effective shots are taken through a depth of four feet or less because water quickly slows an arrow. Flight shooting is another type of archery enjoyed in some parts of 
various continents. Arrows are shot for distance. Special bows and arrows are usually designed for just this purpose for traveling far. Today's flight bows shoot over 900 yards. Novelty shoots are occasionally held for enjoyment, entertainment and the variety. These contests sometimes take the form of cloud shooting where in a 48 foot target is laid out on the ground and shot at from 140 to 280 yards. Archery golf is also a game which is very much similar to golf with a flight arrow, an approach arrow and a putting arrow shot at a four inch ball. In rowing, a small group of archers take turns calling out a target to see who can come the closest. Crossbow competition is enjoyed in some parts of the North American continent. Technical advances in crossbow design and in materials have made crossbow very accurate. Today, shooters aim for 60 centimeter target faces from distance as great as 65 meters for crossbow. No matter what form of archery or what type of equipment you come to enjoy, it is the same basic form and the shot to shot consistency that leads to shooting accurately. The equipment and your physical and mental skills must come together to produce the shot. Well, level one archery coach trainees, so much for the history of archery for the level one archery coach. Now let's see if you can answer the 10 questions. I have asked 10 questions. What questions are you asking? Number one, in which part of the world are the bow and arrow pictured in drawings that date 20,000 years ago? 20,000 saal ke pehle, kon sa gao mein drawings mein bow and arrow naksha chuda hai gaya tha? Well, I'm sure you should be able to find out if you listen to the lecture again. Question number two, how many years ago did the ancient Egyptians first establish the bow as a primary weapon of war? Kitne saal ke pehle ancient Egyptians name bow ko ek pehla, uh, you know, a hathiyar jaisa banaya gaya. When, when it was in the first primary weapon. Now, question number three. What was new about the bow that was introduced by the Assyrians around 1000 800 BC. What were the components? What were, were the bows made of? And what was the distinct quality of that kind of bow used by the Assyrians around 1800 BC? Now let's go down to the next question. That is question number four. What was the name of the society that Sir Christopher Morris established to promote archery in England. What was it called and which year? Question number five. What was the name of the book that Roger Ascham published and in which year? What was the name of the book and in which year did he publish it? Question number six. When and where was the ancient Scarton Silver Arrow Contest first held? And uh, again, where was it held? All right. And that next question is question number seven. In which year was archery introduced in the Olympics? Konsa saal archery Olympics mein introduced kare gaya? And where konsa gao mein? Well, that was seven questions. And now let's go down to question number eight. What does the acronym FITA stand for? What is FITA today known as? Now, question number nine. Who invented the compound bow and when? Compound bow ko kon invent kiya or kon sa saal mein invent kaya gaya? Question number 10. What type of bow is used in the Olympics? Olympics mein kon sa rakhab ka bow use kar rahe hain? There will be more that you may have to study about archery history in the next level, in the level two and level three. Now get back to the lecture and find the answer to the 
10 questions and get it in your head well please well, let me again welcome you to the national level one coaches workshop organized by the Archery Association of India and supported by OGQ. The common mission of all of us is the same, to make India, our motherland, Hindustan, the ultimate in archery. Let's join hands toward this goal and chant Om, Om, Om. Olympic medal, Olympic medal, nothing but the Olympic medal in archery. Jai Hind, Vande Madaram. Bye-bye.